God give me grace to make this video. What you're about to see Taylor Marshall say about Pope Francis might shock you and even anger you because it's such a big, fat, bold-faced lie from hell. I can't say it's exactly a lie because a lie means that you intentionally try to deceive somebody. And I don't know his thoughts and I don't know his heart or his intentions, so I don't know if he's intentionally trying to deceive people, but he is misleading people and saying things about the Pope that aren't true. Maybe he's just prodigiously ignorant and hasn't done any research, and I feel like he's relying on the news media to give him his stories. But the bottom line is, he has told two huge, slanderous falsities about Pope Francis. And I didn't even mean to come across this video. I was researching something else, and I just happened to stumble across this video and watched this clip. You know, they didn't come out and say, a dude can marry a dude. When I heard that, my mouth dropped. I said, no, 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 he did not. And I rewound it. And he did. I rewound it three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. I listened to it over and over. A dude can marry a dude. A dude can marry a dude. A dude can marry a dude. But before we get to him and before I address them and show what disgusting, slanderous evils they are, let me put it into context. See what he has to say for himself. Bergoglio. Our time. It's been since 2013 under the, I will call it this, tyrannous pontificate of Francis Bergoglio. I would say the worst pontificate in the history of the Catholic Church. Yeah, but Taylor, there's some like really bad, these bad popes, and there were some bad ones. Especially you go back like in the 900s. They didn't change the faith. You know, they didn't come out and say a dude can marry a dude. We want to bless dudes and dudes like they do in Germany. They didn't say, eh, if you're in mortal sin or you're in a non-sacramental marriage and you're sexually active, you can keep re receiving communion, amoris laetitia. You know, they didn't come out and say, a dude can marry a dude. Eh, if you're in mortal sin or you're in a non-sacramental marriage and you're sexually active, you can keep re receiving communion. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? He said that a man can be married to a man according to Pope Francis. Two men can be married just like the ones in Germany. And he's trying to do the exact same thing that those schismatic German bishops in Germany are trying to do. This is what he says about the Pope and it's a bold-faced slanderous lie. Or at least slander. And then he tells another one when he says that people in mortal sin can go freely receive the Eucharist according to Pope Francis. I literally, when I watched this, I could not believe my ears. And I never listen to him anymore because he's, he's way out there. He went off the reservation a long time ago when he doesn't represent the church and he leads countless people astray and he's a poison, quite frankly. And this is just more proof of this. And seriously, literally he said that two men can be married to dudes according to Pope Francis. But the reality is Pope Francis has said the opposite. He has condemned homosexual marriage again and again and again. And what does Taylor Marshall say? Oh, he says it's okay, which means that he's either being dishonest or he's completely prodigiously ignorant and is letting the news media give him his facts. He said he's trying to follow the German bishops, which is literally the opposite of everything that's been going on in the real world, Taylor. Seriously, the real world is the opposite of Taylor's world. This should make people angry. I mean, we should pray for him and commit to praying for him and for his conversion, but it all should, also should make people stop listening to him. And just so you don't have to take my word for it, listen to what the Pope himself says compared to what Taylor Marshall has said about the Pope. First, the German bishops want to bless same-sex unions and push toward gay marriage. And they want women's ordination. Okay, just let's throw that out there. So, does Pope Francis want that? What did Pope Francis say? First, he said it is not licit to impart a blessing on relationships or partnerships 
even stable ones, that involve sexual activity outside of marriage, as in the case of unions between persons of the same sex. Then he goes on to condemn anything that is not true Christian marriage, which is between one male and one female, open to life. Listen to what he says. It is a matter of avoiding that something that is not marriage, which is being recognized as marriage. And here he's talking about the German bishops trying to bless illicit unions and gay couples and push them toward marriage. He's condemning that here. It goes on to say, therefore, rites and prayers that could create confusion between what constitutes marriage, which is the exclusive, stable, and indissoluble union between a man and a woman, naturally open to the generation of children, and what contradicts it, are inadmissible. This conviction is grounded in the perennial Catholic doctrine of marriage. And it is only in this context that sexual relations find their natural, proper, and fully human meaning. The church's doctrine on this point remain firm. Before I go on, because there's a little bit more of what he says in this paragraph, but he says that he's keeping the perennial teaching of the church, meaning the long-standing age-old teaching of the Catholic Church, which can't be changed. He says he's not changing it. Second of all, he says the Catholic doctrine is clear on this. Marriage is between one man, one woman, open to life, and <clears throat> not closed off to children. How much more clear could the Pope be that he's condemning the German bishops who are trying to push same-sex marriage, same-sex relationships, and he's saying, no, that is not what marriage is. The church's teaching on marriage has always been clear, and we can't change it. He goes on to say that this is also the understanding of marriage that is offered by the Gospels. For this reason, when it comes to blessings, the church has the right and the duty to avoid any right that might contradict this conviction or lead to confusion. Such is also the meaning of the responsum in the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith, faith which states that the Church does not have the power to impart blessings on unions of persons of the same sex. So not only can we not make people married, Taylor, and the Pope is not pushing for homosexual marriage, nor did he say that two dudes could get married, nor did he say that anywhere ever. The fact that he said there's no marriage except between a man and a woman, and we can't even bless same-sex unions. It says we don't have the power to bless same-sex unions. We have a whole long video, multiple videos on this, but this is literally a smear campaign against Pope Francis. It's wicked, it's malicious. Slander, whether you intend to do it or not, you can destroy somebody. It's also rash judgment because you didn't do your homework. Listen to what St. Francis says on rash judgment, Francis de Sales. He says, many men make a habit of rash judgment merely because they like to play the philosopher and probe into men's moods and morals as a way of showing their own keen intelligence. Does that sound like anybody anyone knows? He goes on to say that the sin of rash judgment is a truly spiritual cancer and causes all things to appear evil to the eyes of those who are infected with it. Does that sound like anybody we know? Some people just see the worst in everyone, especially Pope Francis, and rash judgment is a mortal sin. Slander is a mortal sin. Taking somebody's good name and destroying their reputation falsely is a mortal sin that's against God. And the Bible says that slanderers will not enter the kingdom of heaven. And right now we have many people being poisoned to believe that Pope Francis is a horrible pope saying all of these bad things that he didn't actually say because somebody can't and won't do their homework. What can we say about people who listen to the news media? I've even heard Taylor Marshall say, oh, well, I haven't listened to the Pope's statements yet, but here, I'm going to give my thoughts on it. Why are you giving your thoughts on it when you haven't listened to what he said, when you haven't heard the facts? Why would you give us your emotional feedback 
without actually getting the facts first. Why would anybody do that? Contrast to this, countless Catholic news sources have said that the Vatican has reined in the German bishops amid proposals to break from church unity, telling them that they can't make innovations on women priests, married priests, same-sex marriage, blessing same-sex unions, and other things. In fact, Pope Francis has come down hard on them, it says, and intervened several times. In fact, several heads of the dicastery in the Roman Curia have directly intervened in the German bishop's synodal process, halting it, halting it, meaning stopping what they're doing, and saying that it is not licit. It's forbidden territory against the doctrines of the church. How much more clear has the church been? Does Mr. Marshall have his head in the sand? How could he not know this? Has he not read a single article? Has he not read the Pope's own words? Has he not read what's come out? How can he go out with an honest, straight face and say that Pope Francis is just blessing two dudes and following the people in Germany? How can he say that Pope Francis is doing gay marriage for two dudes just like the people in Germany? How can he say that? It's wrong. I hope people can see that he's shooting from the hip here. And if he's shooting from the hip in this short little clip on Facebook that I just randomly found, how many other wrong things, as he said, by the truckload that people just trust because they think he's a trusted source? Similarly, when we're talking about his encyclical, he says that the Pope has endorsed people to receive communion freely in mortal sin. I don't even know if he's read the encyclical, minus maybe the paragraph in question, but the fact is the the document itself says expressly the opposite. It literally says that people can't receive in mortal sin, and we're not changing the teachings of the church. And it goes on to talk about sins that mitigate a mortal sin, making it not a mortal sin. And it rarely spells this out at length. It's talking about a lot of, I mean, we're not going to go into it now. There's been whole videos made on it. But the fact that he said that people can freely receive communion in mortal sin is literally the opposite of what the document said, just like him saying that two married men is fine with Pope Francis, which is exactly the opposite of what Pope Francis has said in so many different occasions. I literally, when I watched this, I could not even believe. I, that's why I had to watch it so many times. I couldn't believe he said this out loud. I couldn't believe he said this out loud. I couldn't believe he actually believes it himself. Intentionally or unintentionally, it is slander and it's wrong. It's wrong. What he's saying about the Holy Supreme Pontiff is wrong. And people have been struck dead in scripture for going against God's anointed ones. So we need to stop this kind of gossip, especially online. Francis de Sales said that when you gossip about people falsely, you commit three murders in one act. These bring us to hell. Just so you know the gravity of these, these will bring you to hell. And you can't be forgiven for them unless you repent and repentance means you have to change your actions, change your lifestyle, have a huge remorse and sorrow for your sins, and then have a firm purpose of amendment never to do that again. Serious sins that are leading people down the path to hell. And they think they're on the path to heaven as a saint vindicated and defending the church. This is the demonic vice of pride. And we have to be careful of it. Please, everybody, pray for people like Taylor Marshall. Please pray for people who are slandering the Pope. Pray for them. Pray for them. I mean, Saul had a big conversion to Paul. So we can pray for these big influencers that they can have a conversion to and start speaking truth or at least caring about it. Thank you for listening to this today, this mini rant. It really gets me upset because innocent people are being hurt. Innocent people are being led astray. People who trust Mr. Marshall, who don't know better, 
and trust his facts or finding out that they're not facts. People have called out Mr. Marshall again and again and again for all the false things he said about Pope Francis, and yet he just keeps saying them. He just lives in his own world, his world bubble, his own echo chamber. In fact, we called him out something on something very small on Twitter, super small and super charitably, very nicely. We were immediately blocked because that's the kind of echo chamber he wants to stay in. And this should tell you all you need to know, people, to get out, to stop listening to him. Who cares if he has some good things to say? If there's also poison in there, poison kills. It destroys. It'll kill an entire family, even if you eat a little bit of it. So don't eat it. <laughs> Reject it. Get rid of it. Find better sources. But thank you all for listening today. Please share this with everyone. Defend our Pope. Defend our church. Be a good Catholic. Don't be a Protestant. Defend the church. Yes, if something's wrong, we can talk about it. We can call it out, but with truth and charity and humility and facts. If you would like to support our ministry during this summer fundraiser campaign, please support us down below. We're trying to find 100 new donors, uh, people giving $50 a month and $25 a month, and even more if you can. And if you would like to follow us daily on social media, have a speaker come to your parish, check out all of that in the show description notes below.